from this to this. To this. Well, what I wanted to do was talk about my journey here on this background just a little bit. You know, there's going to be some things that you're going to be thinking about with a background, and I just letting you know that I'm not the expert, but as you can tell, there are a lot of factors in figuring what you want in this background, and one of them's going to be is how much area you want to cover. You know, for my unique situation, I just, I only have the space that I have. You know, I what do I have to cover up in the background? As you could tell off to the side here, it's just, it doesn't look good. And what I have on the other side, it just doesn't look good. Now, depending on where you're putting this thing up at, you could have, you could have a uh, background all the way wrapped around. Now, the wrapping around stuff with this type of wood, there's uh, Marks of Sweden. I'm going to put his thing up here. He has a way to take this wood, wet it down, form it, and then bend it around, and then meld the pieces together. I thought about doing that, but I'm just not going to do that right now. And um, off to the side, I just really was limited on how much more room that I could actually go over that way. So I was kind of relegated to just putting the background right behind this. Initially I was looking at I was looking at a fairly significant background and I thought it was fairly significant. Uh, in my other video I talked about a eight foot long, three foot tall banner picture and they ranged anywhere from $285 to the last one I had. Uh, he was going to make it 10 foot because I wanted it farther than just from the edge of 8 foot to the edge of 8 foot. It was going to be 10 foot where I could wrap it around a little bit to cover a little bit the side of this mountain. And now we're up at the $300 mark. And uh, so it, it depends on where you're going to put it, how much space you have to do this. You may have uh, sheetrock walls all the way around like this and just be able to paint it on. And that that's good. I'm just showing you that for me, it, I was space limited in, in what I could do. I think that eight foot by four foot is probably enough. Now I battled, I, I hung this thing at at three foot and I had it just above the mountain. Then I didn't have enough for clouds and, and it, it was a battle uh, that I had to go through trying to figure out the right height that I wanted to put behind this. Now, Dan's Grand Valley, and I'll put his thing up here too. He's got a nice looking background around his whole thing and he's had to wrap it around and I'm sure he's got a video out there that explains that. Um, again, some things that you're going to have to do is how much space you have, how much money you have, and how how much, hold on, and how close you want to put this thing to the wall. Now, for me, I built my little shelf onto the back side here, so I have a whole lot of things that tucked into my little shelf, and I'm four inches away from the wall. So when I built this, I built it the, so the perspective is from four inches. It works pretty good. There's my lake, there's my water, there's my trees in the background, and it all works. Now, you're not gonna be able to go back there and work, but as mine sets here in the room, this is how it looks. This is the perspective of how it looks. Let me show you what happens if I put it out into the room a little bit. What I've done was I've pulled this thing out. And the good thing about these 
this layout is, is you can move this thing in and out and in and out and in and out. I'm going to be putting some casters on the wheels so it makes it a little easier, but they're, they're different kind of caster where you could step on them and then put the wheel down so the wheels aren't down the whole time. But anyway, that's about the minimum space back there for me to get back behind this to work on any part of the track. That if I leave it, and let me show you what the perspective does on the picture. It doesn't look, it still doesn't look terrible depending on where you're looking at it. As you could tell that if the farther you go out from the wall, the more the picture you're gonna have to paint back behind that. A while ago it was perfect, but this was the only thing that was painted, is what I needed painted. Now, if I leave it out from the wall, you got some more painting to do. Depends on how and how far out you want to put it. But it, it really doesn't look too terrible still out about a foot from the wall. I would just have to kind of finish up back there a little bit. So how far away from the wall are you going to be keeping this thing? And if it's going to be movable in and out, or you may just want to put it put it back against the wall the whole time you're running it and then pull it out to work. You know, that's kind of what, it, that's part of the battle that I had. How do I build the picture to match what I want? And the thing is, is it moves. Sometimes I want it out, sometimes I want it in. And I just have to take the best of both worlds and try to mix them up. Now, Dan, Grant, Dan's Grand Valley, he actually built some side ones and actually one for the front so that when he's taking videos that, that it actually shows up as uh, fully all the way around. One of the things I also thought about doing was building from this corner up at an angle to the top of that board and just putting some in there. But it'll look like a box. It'll look like a big old diorama is basically what it looks to it. And it'll block off all this open space and give this section a background. Okay. The thing is, is I can do that because this ledge matches perfectly up on the eight foot background back there. I could put a board there pretty easy and I could put a board there pretty easy and it matches up perfectly on that eight foot back there. So I could do that in the future too. Those are just some of the things that I battled with and uh, again, so it's space, how much money you want to throw into it. I, I just didn't really want to put a lot of money into it. As this thing sets, right now, I put $15 in that piece of wood. Into the blue, I put $17 into that paint, into that purple color. I bought uh, a, a little pint. It was only $4.38. It's, uh, it's called a sample at Home Depot or Lowe's. I had the greens already, the browns I had already, the blue down for the water I had already. So it was just time and effort. And, and I'm not an artist. I, I am not an artist, and this scared me to death about having to do this. I, the worst I could throw away was about 40 bucks. Does this look okay? Is this artist quality? Absolutely not. Does it look okay? It looks okay. I could put up with it. Would I rather have a photograph in the background? Uh, absolutely, I would. I just, for the time being in my budget of what I have going on right now, this is what I'm going to be stuck with right now. I'll just I'll just uh, pull it out when I want to work on it or my grandson wants to work on it. When my grandson comes over, he loves standing behind the bridge over there and watching it this way. So that background does no good at all. So it's it just depends on what you want and what you want to look like sitting there in the house. Somebody walks in, they see it, this is what they're going to see. Okay, that's enough rambling. Now, if you want to know how the sausage was made... I'm going to put in some video, short video of, of what I did and how I did this background. And I still have some work to do. Uh, basically, I'm us using this bottom section down here as a mixing board to do these other, the areas that I needed to do. Now I need to go finish up some of this other stuff in case I want it 
more presentable setting out. I haven't figured that out yet. Here's the sausage. I got this yucca board, which is basically the board they use in garages to uh, put pegboard. It's 1 8 by 48 by 96. And let's see. This is some uh, stuff from, it's that color. Sky, that's which one I used. And I only bought a, this is a pint. Actually, it's not even a pint, it's seven ounces, but it's a sample that you could buy. This is of the, the darker color I used for the mountains. And it's up here. Well, I got this thing hung up on there and uh, getting ready to do some painting. see what she does I'll just put as many coats on here as I need to to turn it white well I wouldn't expect too much out of the first coat of this primer okay so much for hanging this thing and painting it it's uh, the moisture in this primer is warping this board look at this I mean it's warping it good maybe because it's got hanging points here and it's putting a little stress on it so I'm gonna get this thing back on the ground and put it flat. See if I can't keep keep this thing flat. Well, down the floor, at least the board stays flat until it dries. And I just put it flat on the floor, taped it down now. Let me get my second coat of primer on there and see how see how that does to it. After three coats of primer, it looks like it dried pretty flat. But uh, without it being on a completely flat surface and drying in that way. It's going to warp. Well, here's my blue. Let me go ahead and get my first coat on this thing. One coat down, one more to go. Damp sponge with a little bit of white latex on it and kind of blended some in the bottom half. This is my other optional height, which would be to that one joint there on that door okay well i'm back up to hang it in a little bit higher well i got the back mountain in there i just put a little bit uh, darker lavender than i brushed it in with some of the uh, sky blue around the edges to soften it up a little bit well i'm sorry i didn't get to show you a whole lot of the painting beyond the uh, the magenta or the purplish looking mountain in the deep background but uh, man you just have to I tell you what that was a it was a mess I tell you mixing paints and trying to find something that looks good and match what's on the the TV there I just explain real quick I just took my purple or my uh, kind of purplish mountain there and I had to mix it with this more this blue and get it I think it was like a, a one to a one to four ounces mix to get this thing lightened down enough to even set in the background and then I uh, blended it in with the blue so I can mellow out that edge a little bit so it wasn't hard then I took that same purple and I added some green to it just a little bit like three drops of green and I put this one in and then I put some blue over top of it to shade it out a little bit. And then the next one, I put three or four more drops of green in, and I did this one. And again, I just kind of went over it with the, you notice that this back one over here has no trees looking on it. That has no trees. <clears throat> then you start having uh, some stippling looking stuff on the top of that. Now this, I just, I tried to simulate what this other guy did and then the closer it got here I put more green and I put these in there I put some water in the background back there and I'm going back there to uh, clean all that mess up the good thing is, is I've moved this table back and forth about 40 times and was able to get back here and put things where they needed to be and that's where everything's at right now well, I'll never be uh, mistaken as an artist, but uh, I did get some trees on that brown. 
Okay, my trees are all done. I got them all the way put across. And, you know, I'm going to use a big, highly technical painting term, you know, that uh, that all us professional painters use. And uh, I smeared. I smeared some green on top of that brown. <laughs> I smeared it around and made it look a little like it had some vegetation on it. And uh, I think the appearance from back here, it looks all right. Okay, I have the desired effect. I do. I may put some more trees on the foreground here, but I have the semi-little lake back there with the uh, with it going out around. You can see it going out and out the side of the hill on the other side, I think. Well, a paper plate, some white paint, and this guy's YouTube video how to make some clouds. And uh, I think I got some on there that don't look too terrible. They're not perfect. Okay, this is the end result. And uh, that's it.